In this video, I'm going to talk about vertical freefall motion. Now remember that vertical freefall motion is just one component of projectile motion. So projectile motion goes in the horizontal and vertical directions, so those are its components. And the horizontal motion is uniform and it's independent of the vertical motion, while the vertical motion is a free fall and is independent of the horizontal motion. Okay? So let's read our example and talk a little bit about what we have here. So the Thompson City Little League program uses a pitching machine to send pop ups to their outfielders for practice. So we're talking about baseball here. So the machine throws the balls at an initial velocity of 88 feet per second, or 60 miles per hour, and it does so from 4 feet above the ground. So I think the best thing that we can do at this point is to draw ourselves a little picture and see what's going on. So maybe we've got a pitching machine, it's got a little arm, and there's the ball right there, right? Okay, and it throws it, and the ball gets tossed up and over. And a little guy with a little baseball cap right over here. He's waiting to catch the ball. He's all excited about it. Here it comes, right? Okay, so it takes off at 88 feet per second. And it does so 4 feet from the ground. Let's talk for a moment about the different uh, components of our motion. So, from the pitching machine to our ball player, that's horizontal motion, and it's going to be uniform, and it has nothing to do with our vertical motion, right? So our vertical motion is our up and down, and that's what's causing our ball to go up, 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 and then it kind of stops going up because the force of gravity is pushing it downward, and then once it kind of hits this point where gravity gets a hold of it, then it starts going back down again. So the motion that it takes, you can see, is kind of parabolic in nature, so that means it forms a parabola, and this parabola opens downward. So since it opens downward, we know that its peak is going to be right up here. And it's going to occur at the vertex. So remember that the vertex kind of uh, is on the axis of symmetry, which we can kind of push there. And it means that the left side of the parabola and the right side of the parabola are symmetric about this line of axis here, this axis of symmetry. Okay, so our vertex is going to be our high point, that's our peak right here. So we know at whatever time, whatever t value, because we're in time here, which is in seconds, whenever this vertex occurs, we know that's going to be the peak. Okay, and we'll get to that here in a moment. So part A says, find an equation that models the height of the ball t seconds after it's thrown. So let's talk about this a second. So t is going to be our independent variable. That's going to be time. So that's our, like our x value, our independent variable is. And our y value, or our dependent variable, is going to be the height. So how high is our ball from the ground? Okay, so we can use our vertical freefall motion formulas here. So we have one where s of t, and s of t is the position function with respect to time, and it's going to be our y value here, it's our dependent variable, and it's going to be the distance the object is, or the ball in this case, is from the ground. It's going to be given by this formula here, negative one-half g t squared, where g is going to be the acceleration constant for gravity, it's pushing the ball down, t is going to be our independent variable, again that's our time, plus v naught t, and v naught is our initial velocity, so where do we start, and in our case it's 88, and then plus s naught, which s naught is going to be the initial position. So where do we start? Well, we started four feet above the ground on our pitching machine. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this equation here so we can kind of fill in the parts and see what's going on here. So let's move down just a little bit. I have my position function, s of t, and it's going to be given by negative one-half g t squared, plus v naught t plus s naught. Okay, so the values that we can put in here, we'll rewrite our function here, negative one-half times gravity, and gravity is going to be 32, because we're talking about feet per second, because feet is going to be uh, the height, and then second is going to be our independent variable. So we're going to use the 32 feet per second squared for gravity, and then t squared plus 
v naught is going to be our initial velocity, so 88 feet per second, so plus 88t, then plus our initial position, which is 4 feet above the ground, so plus 4. We can kind of work this and simplify it a little bit, so we'll have negative 16t squared plus 88t plus 4. And this is my answer for part A, which said, find an equation that models the height of the ball t seconds after it's thrown. So we're saying this is how high the ball is going to go given the t value of how much time has passed since it's been launched. In part B, we're asked, what is the maximum height the ball will reach and how many seconds will it take to reach that height? Okay, so as we mentioned before, we kind of have this parabola and it's opening downward and we know it's opening downward because we have this negative in front. So, and we also said that at its vertex, that's going to be the peak. That's going to be the highest it ever is. So, how can we find the vertex of a parabola? Well, we know how to find the x value, or in our case, the t value of a parabola, by using the formula negative b over 2a. And that's going to give us the x value for the vertex of a parabola. So I can use this <clears throat> and take this equation, which is in standard form. So we have our a value, our b value, and our c value. So negative 16 is our a, 88 is our b, and 4 is our c. And we can kind of just substitute into this negative b over 2a. So negative b is going to be the opposite of 88, and that's going to be over twice the a value, which is negative 16. So when I do a little simplification here, I have negative 88 over negative 32, which is then going to come out to really nice actually to point uh, seven. I'm sorry, 2.75, and this is an x value, our independent variable, which in our case is time. So it's 2.75 seconds. Okay, so that's kind of the second question. That's how many seconds will it take to reach the height? Well, 2.75 seconds. But the first question said, what is the maximum height the ball will reach? So now that we have our 2.75 seconds, we know that this is the time which will occur. We can plug that into our position function. That will actually give us the height. So I'm going to find S of 2.75. So I'm going to plug 2.75 in every time I see a T. Okay, and now it's just a matter of Go ahead and simplify this expression. So negative 16 times, we have 2.75 squared. That's going to come out to be 7.5625 plus, and then 88 times 2.75 should be 242, and then plus 4. So as we go down, we're going to go and multiply here. So it should be negative 16 times. That business should be about a negative 121 and then the rest of this stuff just comes down along for the ride. So negative 121 plus 242 should be positive 121 and then plus 4 should be 125 and this is our position function so 125 will be feet. So in this example we've seen now that when a ball is launched it's going to at 88 feet per second it kind of goes and kind of falls and then our little guy over here he can catch it He's all excited about catching his pot fly. And the height of this is going to be a vertex of a parabola. So we can find the vertex by finding the x value, or the value of our independent variable, in our case t, is the opposite of b over 2a. And then once we have that opposite of b over 2a, we can just plug that into the position function, and we can find out its height.